Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield coming to you on this Sunday, September 28, 2014, welcoming you to our weekly broadcast. Today, I'm going to be looking at Isaiah, the 10th chapter, the 27th verse, and I'm going to be speaking out of my heart today. And let us begin reading the word before we pray, and as we pray. First, Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for this your day, we thank you for all that you're doing, God, and all that you're doing for your people. And we know, God, that without a doubt, without fail, that you are still God. There is nothing that will ever impede your strength, your power, or your ability to work in the affairs of men. So on today, God, as we go into your word, God, we pray that you send the anointing that makes preaching and teaching profitable for both the giver and the hearer that we together might come to the unity of the faith in the body of Christ together. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. And we're going to be looking at again uh, Isaiah, the 10th chapter and the 27th verse, and it reads as follows, And it shall come to pass in that day that this burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And for emphasis, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And many of us, uh, we've heard this particular passage of scripture preached so often and so many times in our churches. And this morning, I have to tell you that my heart is heavy within me. Even as I'm sitting here before you teaching this message, my heart is is heavy because of the anointing power and the anointing strength of the Holy Spirit. And I believe by the will of the Lord that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will and shall destroy the yokes of the enemy. Uh, Today, uh, before I sat down to to record this message, I went to visit a ministry. And I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail, but a young preacher that I've been following for quite some time, the Lord just placed it in my spirit to go and hear this powerful uh, woman of God, and and the Lord really blessed. Uh, But as I left the sanctuary, as powerful as the message was, my heart was grieved within me. And I'm not going to go into the particulars as to why my heart was grieved, but the thing is this, it is the anointing of God that destroys the yoke of the enemy. With as much power and emphasis and and, and dedication that the preacher placed on the word of the Lord on today, I just felt many things within my spirit that should and could have been broken under that anointed word that were not broken or was not broken. And even I had to repent within myself by asking the Lord to God, God, where is the anointing in the body of Christ? Where is the anointing in the church world? Where is the anointing to destroy the yokes of the enemy? Why are our people defeated? Why are so many things going on around us that we are involved in as Christians, but yet it has no forward momentum for the kingdom of God? Why are our churches diminishing in size? Why are the people not free? Why has the seasons changed, but yet... There is no health, and the health of my people of God are not restored. Isn't there a bomb in Gilead according to the scripture? Yes, there is a bomb in Gilead. And God wants his people to be restored, to be healed, to be set free, to be delivered, to be one with him. And the thing is, a lot of times when we look at our lives, we spend a lot of focus, a lot of attention, a lot of times on the things that are not godly in nature, TV shows, places that we go, we're into ourselves, we want to look good, we're always shopping, buying clothes for ourselves, we're always into jewelry, we're always into our image, we're always pursuing money when it comes to careers and jobs and education, and nothing is wrong with that when our focus is fully and foremost on the Lord. People around us are dying, going to hell. People around us that are losing hope, losing their confidence, losing their faith, losing it all over the place. Families are falling apart. Marriages are at an all-time high as far as the divorce rate. We're seeing too many things going on, but where is the power of God? Where is the anointing? 
of the Holy Ghost that destroys all of these yokes. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that destroys the yokes of the enemy. Now let's talk about some of these yokes because we don't know what needs to be broken if we don't fully understand and comprehend what a yoke is. A yoke is something that was placed on an animal and that purpose was to guide that animal for an intended purpose. And that intended purpose, for instance, for a farmer who wanted to plow a field, he wanted to plow a straight line, so he put the yoke to harness the power of the beast of burdens so that he would keep them under control so that they would be led and they would go down the path the way that he would want them to go. He would harness their power to do his will and to do his bidding. To go where he wanted them to go and to sow that he can sow into the ground of their lives what he wanted to. The same way with the devil, the yokes that are on our lives, the yokes of bondage. What are those bondages? Those bondages are fear. Those bondages are sexual uh, uh, indecency. Those yokes are our pride. Those yokes are our lack of prayerfulness. Those yokes are our bitterness and our anger, our deception. Those yokes are those of us that want to control and manipulate circumstances. Those of us who want to lie and not tell the truth. And even when God deals with our conscience, we still act as though we have told the truth. Those of us that are possessed by demonic spirits that gives us habits drugs and alcohols, those of us that may have the spirit of murder, those yokes that the enemy place on us, gossip, whoremongering, slander, abuse, mental issues, health issues, things that God has never wanted once to be a part of our lives. But the word declares. <coughs> that it's the anointing. That destroys the yoke. Tune in by weekly on social media. To hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. It is the anointing of God that he seeds into our lives through the working powers of Jesus Christ, through the blood that he spilled on Calvary's cross, through his redemptive work on Calvary, through his death, burial, and resurrection. It's through his power of the resurrection, not just solely of the cross and the death on the cross, nor in his burial, but all of that working together in concert with his resurrection to destroy the powers of darkness. The yoke of the enemy is just that. It is the power of darkness, the harness your God-given strength, your God-given abilities, your God-given talents, your God-given calling. And for the enemy to place a yoke about your neck that you cannot break away from. And to lead you to plow the paths that he would have you to plow by the yoke not being broken. So that your life will communicate and seed into others' lives. The darkness of the kingdom of darkness. But when the yoke of the enemy is destroyed, 
you are able by the Spirit of God to sow life into lives of people because of the yoke, because of the yoke, the anointing needs to destroy it. The anointing destroys yoke so powerfully and so and so completely that it would never have opportunity or chance to regroup or to recover to once again enslave and to control and to manipulate. That's why many of you heard me say multiple times, I hate the spirit of control. I hate people who attempt to manipulate folks. I love it when people are given an opportunity to exercise their free will. And as a result of exercising their free will, they choose to submit to God. God gives all of us a free will to submit to his power, to his grace, and to his anointing. When we submit our will to the will of the Father... And allow that anointing that he has shed brought in our lives. Then God himself is able to move in our lives in a greater measure. In a greater measure of influence. In a greater measure of power. In a greater measure of chance. God wants our brokenness. Which comes because a yoke has not been destroyed. To be completely destroyed. Some of you are living in a state of mournfulness. Some of you are living in a state of regret. Some of you are living in a state of guilt. Some of you are living in a state of running from God. Because you feel as though you've done God disservice. Or God can never cleanse you. That's a yoke. That needs to be destroyed. Some of you say that I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. That's a yoke that needs to be destroyed. Some of you say my marriage is falling apart. That's a yoke that needs to be destroyed. Some of you say my child is strung out on drugs and alcohol. That's a yoke that needs to be destroyed. Some of you say that my prayer life is not what it used to be. That's a yoke that needs to be destroyed. Some of you are saying that my health is failing and the doctors cannot figure out what's going on with me. That's a yoke that needs to be destroyed. Some of you say I don't have peace in my soul. That's a yoke. That needs to be destroyed. And as long as that yoke needs to be destroyed and has not been destroyed. God gains no victory, no praise, no power. But whenever we see yokes in our lives that God wants to break. They understand what the word destroy here means. Destroy means to completely pulverize. Cause it to disintegrate. Cause it to be rendered powerless, ineffective, and not of use to anyone whatsoever. It is though the thing never existed before. It is removed so that something else can be put, placed upon it. The Lord said, take his yoke upon you. His burdens are light. He is never going to put on you anything that you cannot bear up under. Because listen, he himself will be the one that will carry the weight of whatever it is that you're confronted with. Because why? He destroyed the yoke off of the enemy so that you would never feel the power and the strength of the enemy's yoke again. The only one that you will feel is the Lord that gives you free choice and free will to seek his face continuously and to pray. There are things that need to be destroyed out of all of our lives. And listen, only God has the power to do it. Stop putting your trust 
in men. Stop putting your trust in frivolous things. Stop putting your trust in pacifiers, in sedation, in those things that can never destroy the yoke of the enemy. Some of you just need plain, full out, 100% deliverance by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray as my heart is grieved today that the power and the strength of the Holy Ghost will once again permeate our lives like he used to do so in the past where we feel the full strength and the power of the Holy Ghost moving in our lives. The strength to revive, to recreate, and to make us all new creations. Dispelling the wicked day in the day of the past. Illuminating the brightness of God's future for us. And saturating our spirits with the love of God. We use that word love too often and misuse it. Love has the power to cover a multitude of sins. You cannot operate in the anointing of God and not love humanity. The Bible lets us know because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe within him should not perish but have everlasting life. Love is the key for the anointing to be made powerful. For people to be set free. We need to be perfected in love. Not in our gifts. Not in our talents. Not in our oratory abilities. But we need to be made perfected in love. Love covers a multitude of sins. <clears throat> Meaning that I truly love you. If I truly love you, my love will pray for you. My love will pray that you will become free. Because now I begin to operate in the love of Jesus Christ. To want to see your, your yokes destroyed by loving you out of the depths of hell that you embrace by. <coughs> so that you could walk in all the intended victories of the kingdom. When God has intended for you to walk in all the victories of the kingdom. One of the first things he does is prove his love for you. I'm frustrated with the church when we say that we love folk, but yet we are afraid to embrace folk. We are afraid to tell them that we love them. We're afraid to embrace people because of the filth of the flesh that is on them. Not realizing that it's not going to rub off on you. Because you're walking in the love of God. The love of God sanctifies and cleanses. And when we love as he loves. Then we will see the anointing return to the church. Not because we're being judgmental. But because we're loving. Because we serve a God who loved us first and foremost. Think about all the stuff that you were in. All the hellaciousness. I could talk about my own lifestyle. I could talk about the sins that I was involved in. 
I could talk about the anger and the bitterness that God delivered me from. But his love prevailed many years ago when I was struggling with all that stuff. But his love and his warmth, when he came to me in the height of all of that, he came to me with a loving voice letting me know, your purpose is still needing to be fulfilled. Think about that. He could have come to me and condemned me and said that your sins are deserving of death. And the lifestyle you're living is deserving of you to spend an eternity in hell. But he came to me in a loving voice. And in a loving way. To let me know that he was still concerned about me. And in the same way, the same similitude, he's coming after some of you all today. Through this message to let you know that his anointing will destroy the yokes of the enemy that is on your life. Why? Because he has need of you. Let me say it again. He has need of you. And you're needed to fulfill a specific role and task in the kingdom that he has already fully qualified you for and equipped you for, and he's empowered you to break the yoke off of others' lives. You have to realize you're more powerful in the kingdom than you are a part from the kingdom. Today God is saying. Put away all the distractions. All the distrust. Forget about the fact. That you've been misused. And abused. And ostracized. And, and set down in some occasions. For things that were right. Or even things that were wrong. Falsely accused. Bruised. Battered. Torn. Whipped. Walked up one side and down the other. God said, it is time to get over it. He said, come to me, learn of me, and let me break the yokes off of your lives. Yes, I know it wasn't pleasant, but God asked me a question yesterday Why I was writing in the midst of writing a book. And God spoke these words to me. But what if I have chosen you for the furnace of affliction? Suppose God trusted you to go through all that horrificness so that you could come out Full of his glory. Full of his anointing. Full of his love. Full of the testimony that I have overcome by the blood of the lamb. And the words of my testimony. Sometimes God takes us through disgraceful situations. To prove his gracefulness to us. And to prove that his grace and his mercy are more than sufficient for us. The sufficiency of his greatness and of his power. Of his mercy, those undue favors that he sheds into our lives day after day. Morning by morning, new mercies he sees. It is a great thing to know that God, mercy, is always there for us. 
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. It's in those merciful times that God proves to us his power and his strength. And he opposes the enemy on our behalf. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. There should be a generation of gratefulness, of a grateful attitude towards our God. Being grateful in your heart for the experiences that you've been through. Being grateful for the yokes that he is destroying, has destroyed, and will destroy. Being grateful just for the privilege and the opportunity to sit at his feet and to be taught of him. Grateful unto him. When God sends his anointing to return to the church, and that's my prayer. Holy Spirit, rule in us. Abide with us and be with us both now and forevermore. When the anointing returns to the church the way that God intends, we won't have to worry about population expansion and growth because the Holy Ghost will cause Jesus to be the focal point of every meeting, of every assembly, of every gathering, of every worship service, of every prayer, every scripture that is read, every preached word that is uttered out of the mouths of the servants of God. And he himself will gain complete And total victory in us. God wishes to birth a fresh oil in our lives. The anointing oil that destroys the yokes of the enemy. I'm speaking calmly today because I believe within my spirit the anointing oil. God wants to saturate our very beings to the point that the anointing destroys the devil's schemes, his wickedness, his devices, his empowering, and his ability to speak in our space and cause what's in the spiritual world that is evil to make a manifestation in the natural world. When God wants his anointing to manifest those spiritual things that brings the destruction of the will of the devil, and causes us to walk in the freedom of the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he shall appear, we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We always talk about that when it comes to the rapture and the church being taken out of here. But I believe when God shows up on the scene, while we are still enrolled in this flesh, when he makes manifestation out of the realm of the spirit into the natural realm and in earthen vessels, we shall be changed inside. From the former image to the glorious image of the sons of God. And when he appears in us, 
the yoke will be completely destroyed because the yoke will not be able to detain, retain, or restrain the will of God for us. Even with the quietness of my spirit today, I hear the chant and the sound of victory for the people of God. God is about to restore something in all of us, and it's the anointing of God praying for restoration for us in the Holy Ghost. Restoration of strength, restoration of power, restoration of a conqueror, restoration of a warrior, restoration of a mighty man and woman of God who is powerful in the word of God because their humility has caused them to bow <coughs> in the presence of God. And the anointing is their key focus. God, return the anointing to your church. Return the anointing to the men and women of God. Return the anointing to the sanctuary. Return with your presence, with all your power, with all your might. That we won't have to try to work you up. You would enter in with us. In covenant agreement. And when we have stepped into the sanctuary. Our relationship with you during the week. Will demand. Your presence. And you yourself. Will union with us. And we will sense, not by our wordings, not by us trying to work you up, but we will feel the sweetness of your spirit as you fill the house with your glory. Change our hearts, change our minds, change our thought processes, change our appetites, change our desires, change us from the inside out. Even as the old people used to sing, something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. We need the anointing, the authentic authentication that you are amongst us and that you are defeating every foe and destroying them with your power. And with your strength. That we won't leave out of the place defeated. <coughs> but we will leave out of the place. Victorious. In your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And. Amen.